inviting me, first of all, and thank you for coming. Um, yeah, where shall I? S well, the, the work, this work is the first time I, I show it in, in, a, in this way. I, I began to work on these films th about three years ago. Um, uh, during traveling and um, I always had uh, certain subjects that I wanted to begin um, uh, to observe in a way because for me these are uh, a sort of life observations. Um, so I would start, I would bring my camera, it's very easy to carry around and I would um, look at uh, a scene and then I just, it was very kind of spontaneous um, moments. It's like this moment where you either capture it or it's gone. Um, so, for example, the, the film there with the palm trees, um, I was passing, I was in a journey to the north of Cyprus uh, where it was the first time I could go, it was 2004. Um, when they, bought, they opened the borders. And for me, it was a, an incredible experience because since I was little, I would hear about this place, about this, uh, it's in the same country, the same land, but I couldn't go. And um, just the fact that I could step in that, um, on, the, on that part of the land was for me a very emotional experience. Uh, so I traveled around and uh, it was a time where really you could see the difference between like what, what was happening on the south and on the north and um, it felt like I, would, I, tra I was traveling back in time because nothing was really developed um, since, since the war in 74 um, and everything was kind of left as it was and um, I felt I, w I, w I was somehow touching something of, of that time. Um, so, I, somehow for me, um, I was trying to talk through the film and, and exp express how I felt at those moments. This, this for example, this scene, I was traveling um, to Morfo. It's, it's, it's an area where they used to do a lot of uh, agriculture and um, at this point, I, I came to this uh, hill where I saw, I saw this happening. I couldn't quite understand what was really happening because um, it's kind of a strange situation. You have someone dragging a tree, but you don't, you don't quite know why they're doing that. And then you have the observers, you have the, the dogs, and uh, it's kind of a family, uh, happy family gathering of the dogs. But at the same time, they're observing this strange happening um, of dragging this tree. And so I was there kind of looking at the scene from a distance, looking at the dogs observing the car and the tree and the dog running behind the guy. And he would go in circles. He would continue circling around uh, uh, the landscape. And uh, I thought it was such an odd uh, uh, moment. Um, so, it was basically this kind of, um, um, in a way, as if I would be setting up a film or a film uh, scene, and this is um, what I would, so I kind of like was looking for specific situations where it would feel as if I'm directing the whole thing, as, although it was just naturally happening. Um, so, of course, I tried to do the editing through the camera, so I wouldn't, I was trying to, to think of this, and that's where the title comes from, like chronicles, meaning that they are, um, it's like documents of time. Um, so what's happening there, I, I want to keep it as raw as possible. Um, so as little editing as possible later on, um, but still, always kind of um, keep the, if there is some kind of tension or in, in the non-narrative description of the scene, that would be um, through, through the camera shots or um, close-ups and going back and forth. 
Um, and then slowly when I, I began to uh, document this type of uh, situations, um, I sort of thought of them as, um, um, in a way, um, like the series I was doing um, previously, the Polaroid series, where I would, uh, in a way, keep one format. Here it's like the film format, you have time, you have movement, you have uh, image. Uh, with the Polaroid series, what I was doing, I would, of course, Polaroid is one format, but through within that uh, frame, I would capture um, a fragment of a bigger scene from from a book, uh, page from a book. So I would look through that lens, the magnifying lens, and I would almost, it was as if I would visit that place again. Um, so here it was, for me, kind of a step further um, to kind of do that uh, in real life, but still th look through this frame and look at them more like, uh, almost like paintings moving. Um, and then, for example, this film, what I was interested in, um, because I was working at the same time for, um, for, for, for some time on this uh, collecting objects from different um, uh, cultures, lots of Chinese um, from Han uh, period and um, lots of African statues and um, clay vases. And what I really um, liked about these um, objects was that they're carrying some type of um, memory in within um, uh, their um, life or they are becoming alive somehow also through the, 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 the sun, the shadows. And what I was thinking here was that um, when I keep the element of, of light um, almost like something happening without me having any control on it, because you would see sometimes it disappears, the sun goes behind the clouds, and so you see the shadow coming back um, or disappearing. And um, that somehow kept them, um, in a way, alive. Um, and I was interested also in, in the fact that they are very isolated, um, almost observed through a microscope and looking at them from our time, but these are objects that um, existed, existed long ago, have been made by humans. They used to have a purpose, um, but almost not anymore. Um, so I want to bring them back to life somehow. It was a kind of, almost a resurrection of, of these objects. 